Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at uh, the concept of differential entropy for a source which can take a continuous set of values, all right. So, source alphabet which can take a continuous set of values, all right. Now, let us look at the differential entropy of a Gaussian source that is a source output which follows the Gaussian which has the Gaussian probability density function, okay. And this is very important because this is as we are going to see later, this is one of the fundamental, I, I mean this is uh, one of the most commonly occurring such source or one can say that the source output uh, the output pro one of the most commonly occurring probability density functions for the source output and has a fundamental role to play in the context of information theory as we are going to see later. Okay. So, we are going to look at the differential entropy differential entropy of a this is the differential entropy of a of a Gaussian source and this is important because this is one of the most it is a fundamental relevance in the context of information theory and it is one of the most commonly occurring practically relevant sources practically relevant sources in the sense frequently since Gaussian distribution naturally occurs occurs very frequently in nature the source output source probability uh, the probability density function of the source output of frequently of can be re frequently represented using uh, the Gaussian probability density function. All right, so it's important to characterize the, uh, the differential entropy of such a Gaussian source. Okay, and as we've known, and as we have seen several times before, no need to repeat it. The Gaussian probability density function is characterized by a bell-shaped curve, which has the peak at the mean and the spread is proportional to the variance, we have the probability density function that is 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma square e power minus x minus mu square divided by 2 sigma square. Uh, the differential entropy of this source is basically h x equals minus infinity to infinity log to the base 2 1 over f of x dx. Now, let us simplify this quantity log to the base 2 we would like to simplify this quantity and then substitute it back here. So, let us look at 1 over f of x x that is 1 over 1 over e square root of 2 pi sigma square e power minus x minus mu whole square divided by 2 sigma square take the reciprocal this is simply square root 2 pi sigma square e raise to positive x minus mu square divided by 2 sigma square. And if you take the log to the base 2 of 1 over f of x x that is basically log natural the natural logarithm of 1 over f of x x 
times log e to the base 2 and you can see from this the natural logarithm well that is log e to the base 2 times the natural logarithm of square root of 2 pi sigma square e raised to well x minus mu square by 2 sigma square which is log e to the base 2. Now, log of square root of 2 pi sigma square is half 2 pi sigma square plus log e to the power of well I am sorry this is half log 2 pi sigma square plus 1 over 2 sigma square into x minus mu whole square. Okay. So, log to the base 2 this quantity is equal to this quantity is equal to log e to the base 2 half log 2 pi sigma square plus 1 over 2 sigma square times x minus u square mu whole square. We have simplified the expression for log to the base 2 1 over f of x. I am now going to substitute this in the expression for the differential entropy to evaluate the differential entropy of the Gaussian source. Okay. So, now what we are going to do in expression for substitute this in the expression for the differential entropy what I have is well h of x equals minus infinity to infinity f of x x times log e to the base 2 times half ln that is the natural logarithm 2 pi sigma square plus x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square times d x. Now, let us look at this term by term. Uh, of course, log e to the base 2 that is a constant. So, that comes out okay. times f of x x let us split the term in the brackets times half l n d x plus well log e to the base 2 uh, f of x x x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma. So, I have split the term into the bracket. So, let us split the term written it as two separate integrals. And now, you can see that in the first integral this is a constant okay? half log 2 pi sigma square this is a constant. So, this will come out of the integral. And if you look at this quantity this has a very interpret uh, we will come to this Okay. Now, let us let me just rewrite this so that we can look 
at the entire thing at once. So, this is log e to the base 2 times half log 2 pi sigma square into int integral f of x dx plus log e to the base 2. Now, in this 1 over 2 sigma square, this is also a constant in the second integral. So, I can write this as 1 over 2 sigma square minus infinity to infinity x minus mu square f of x dx. And you will observe two interesting things. First, this is equal to 1 because the area under this minus infinity to infinity f of x dx. This is nothing but the area under the probability density function equals 1. Okay? So, this is nothing but area under or this is nothing but total area under p d f. Okay? This is the from the it follows basically from the definition or the properties of the p d f follows from let us say follows from property of p d f. And if you look at this, this is very interesting. This is integral minus infinity to infinity, integral minus into infinity x minus mu whole square plus where mu is the mean f of x dx. This is nothing but the variance. This is simply the definition. This is the variance. This is nothing but this is equal to the variance that is integral minus infinity to infinity x minus mu square f of x dx that is nothing but the uh, the second center second order cent, uh, the central moment of second order that is the variance of the random variable okay this is for any general random variable not necessarily only for a gaussian random variable this is the definition of the variance of a random variable okay so now i substitute these and what i have is basically log e to the base 2 times half ln 2 pi sigma square times 1 plus log e to the base 2 into 1 over 2 sigma square into sigma square. And what you can see is basically the sigma squares cancel and uh, therefore, I can write this as well uh, log e to the base 2 into half uh, log 2 pi sigma half ln 2 pi sigma square. So, I can write this as half log I can write this as half log to the base 2 2 pi sigma square because log e to the base 2 into log 2 pi sigma square to the base e is basically nothing but log 2 pi sigma square to the base 2 plus half log e to the base 2 which is equal to which is equal to half log 2 pi half log 2 pi sigma square e okay okay and this is the differential entropy of Gaussian source that is output is Gaussian probability density function with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square and observe that it depends only on the variance. that is something very interesting. It does not depend on the on the mean mu. That is, you take your Gaussian source, shift the output probability density function by a constant mean, all right, 
the, resu the resulting differential entropy is not different, right? The, res the uh, differential entropy of the source does not change, it does not depend on mu. It only depends on the variance sigma square and that is very interesting because if you see So, this is mu, the d does not depend on mu, it depends only on the variance. it depends only on the variance that is the spread and you can see half log 2 pi sigma square this increases with variance. That is what you can see is that as the variance increases of this Gaussian the randomness increases the spread increases all right when its variance is low then it is concentrated towards the mean. All right, one can say that the randomness or the uncertainty of the source is low. As the variance increases, the spread around the mean or the spread from the mean increases. All right. So, the randomness of the source is increasing. Therefore, the differential entropy is increasing or the uncertainty is increasing and entropy is nothing but a measure of the uncertainty. So, D E increases. with variance sigma square basically because as as the uncertainty increases okay so the differential entropy so you are observing two interesting things one is that it does not depend on the mean that is a shift by a constant factor which affects only the that is if you shift the Gaussian probability density function by a constant that is the Gaussian probability density function is just shifted in the mean the variance remains unchanged the differential entropy of the source remains unchanged it does not depend on the mean and also you can see it depends only on the variance and it increases with the variance as the variance increases the uncertainty the spread around the mean increases the uncertainty of the Gaussian source is increasing therefore, the differential entropy is increasing. So, these are some interesting aspects all right. So, first we have derived the differential entropy of this Gaussian source which is very fundamental uh, which has very uh, which is very relevant for has a fundamental relevance in the context of information theory as we are going to see later when we discuss about the channel capacity the capacity of a Gaussian channel, a channel with Gaussian noise and also you can see that has an interesting property that the differential entropy does not depend on the mean and it increases with the variance. All right, So, let us stop here and we will look at other aspects of the subsequent windows. Thank you very much.